I got another box of plants in today. It's Tuesday, um, May 26th. So I was supposed to have these yesterday, and I was told that Southwest was running, which was true, on Memorial Day. But little did the shipper know, and I know, that my local airport is run by contract labor. So the contract labor was off having cheeseburgers and filet mignon. So, anyways, I wasn't able to get them yesterday, but they sat in the cooler overnight. Um, they arrived on time yesterday. I just didn't have anybody there to process it. But hopefully they should be good. They just sat an extra day, which um, shouldn't be an issue. So, anyways, I haven't seen what's in the box, so let's open it up and see what I got. Just a small order. I did a couple special orders on this, on this particular um, order. Again, Mike, be careful with these. All right, let's see. So, let's see what I got. I sure that's some really nice stuff, as usual. Packing list. All right, first thing I got. Sagittaria narrow leaf. These are actually grown immersed looking at them, but they will convert. Sagittaria narrow leaf. These are immersed. They'll convert. Once they convert, you'll actually get a, a lot. Um, the leaf will be a lot more narrow um, when you when you look at submerged versus immersed. So these are immersed. They'll convert no problem. Trust me. Easy, easy plant. So Sagittaria narrow leaf. Easy plant. Trust me. Um, I wouldn't order them if they were otherwise. Anubius, assorted Anubius, medium size. Um, I just order these as assorted. It's not because I get a different price. I just, a lot of people ask me what you got. Um, sometimes I can identify them. Like this looks like it's a Nandi. So, and this looks like it's Congensis. I just like to get a variety. I stock them. A lot of the Anubius look similar. So, and their, their growing conditions are, are the same. It's a low light, uh, minimal care. Um, the only thing difference really is the leaf shape and some of the, the more rare species, you'll get a different, a little bit different color shape, but for the most part, Anubius is green and uh, the, the care is the same. All right, easy, easy plant. Trapdoor snails. These have been selling really well. You can put these outside or <coughs> inside in your tank. And if you Google these, they are good with algae. Right? These are actually were outside. They got a little pond mud on them. But look how big that is. That's a big snail. Very cool. Um, I think they're a lot cooler than your traditional mystery snails. Um, they actually eat algae. Mystery snails really don't. Mystery snails will help clean up, <coughs> excuse me, extra, extra, not fish poop, but uh, uneaten food. Um, people ask me, what, what eats fish poop? Nothing. So, don't have anybody in the big box store tell you snails will eat poop, or certain bottom fish will eat poop. Nothing eat poop. Do you eat poop? I don't think so. Poop is poop. Yep. All right, what we got here? Kleiner bar swords. Lori, you got me to bring these in for you, and as soon as I brought these in, it seems like everybody wants them, so I thank you for that. Um, Kleiner bar swords, very beautiful sword. A reddish um, looking stem, nice green that pops on the leaf. Um, beautiful, look at the red on this one. It's actually more of a maroon, but you can see it. That is really, really nice. Kleiner bar swords. All right. Again, I've had a lot of people. <coughs> this, this past week was, was went really well with sales. Um, people are wanting stuff that that sold out immediately. Um, so if you want something, I suggest that you message me, get your order in. Um, you can contact me on Facebook 
at facebook.com backslash KJE Aquatics. All right, that's the best way to contact me. Um, I do have a website, kjeaquatics.com. People say, oh, I go to your website and, and everything's out of stock. Trust me, I have stuff. I work two other jobs, so I have a hard time keeping up with the, uh, the website. Um, I'm wanting to do another website um, when I get time. I only got so many hours in a day, I apologize. If you want to see a nice, big, fancy website, um, you're not going to find it from me for right now. Um, I do a lot of business through, through social media, and I can honestly tell you that my prices are much better than, than most. Um, my quality is excellent. Um, but if you want to pay extra for a nice, big, fancy website, then um, so be it. Um, <coughs> so facebook.com backslash KDE Aquatics is the best place to find me. Um, you could also email me at kdeaquatics at gmail.com. Alright, <coughs> excuse me. Water hyacinths. It's pond and tub season, and these are a staple. Some states are invasive, so please check your local laws. Um, water hyacinths. This is a giant version of duckweed, basically. Um, easy to control, though, so you, you can pick it out. But these grow very fast. Um, and they'll fill up your tub um, rather quickly so if you don't have a big pond or a big tub I suggest you don't buy a lot of them um, say you got a hundred gallon st stock tank um, I would start out with maybe four or five um, some people say well give me a dozen that's more than you need well more than you need um, if you got a big you know one acre pond you might want to get more obviously but these grow very easy. They provide, these root, roots will get nice and long, like really long. So they provide good um, fry cover um, if you're trying to breed fish outside. Or I do flag fish outside, and the flag fish will actually lay the egg in, in the roots too. So, and they provide shade. So it gets hot outside. People say, well, don't you overheat your tubs? Um, provide shade also depends on the, on the tub placement. But you shade your fish and um, they, they do fine. Sorry, I get tongue tied. Um, also, these are excellent at absorbing um, excess nutrients in the water. So your your ammonia, your your excess nitrates. Um, these filter the water very well. All right. So let me put these in here. All right. What else I got? Hornwort. A staple here, and if, if you got tubs, ponds, or aquariums, hornwort is the plant um, that is excellent for, for absorbing um, the, the phyton algae. In, in turn, it absorbs the, the ammonia, the nitrates, and such. If you breed fish or you want to breed fish, live bears, this provides excellent, excellent fry cover for your guppies, your swordtails, your mollies, your platies, um, and whatnot. So, hornwort, I usually get a dozen bunches every week, and it sells out, so this is just a revolving door of stock. Alright. Ice pack, still cold, not frozen, but cold. Cryptocrine wenty green. Nice green wenty clumps. Again, these are clumps. I don't buy wenty in individual plants. When the plant's available from the nursery in a clump, that's how I stock it. You get more for your money. You get a better deal. Um, multiple plants. There's, uh, I mean, I'll just count them for you. One, two, three, four. There's five plants in this one clump. So, again, um, when you're checking price, check apples to apples. All right, because you, you'll see my price for a clump is a, a lot of times similar to the price of an individual plant. Um, so green wenty clump, red wenty clump. All right, same, pretty much same species, just a different color variant. You'll see the red. You'll get a, a maroon reddish stem. You'll get a darker leaf. 
It all depends on, on what color. You can mix them, red, green, get a nice contrast in your tank. So, Crip 20, red, and green. Yeah, I got these to try. Oops. These are Japanese dwarf penny warts. This can be floated or it can be, you can plant it. You're going to need tweezers because this is pretty fine. But dwarf Japanese penny wart, you can plant this, each individual stem, and it's a nice foreground plant. Okay? Nice. They had them. I wanted to try them, see how they sell. Hopefully, they sell well for me, and I'll and I'll restock them. All right. Um, you, you'll notice a lot of times I get a lot of the, a lot of the same plants, similar plants um, each week. It's because I sell the shit out of them, right? So it only makes sense to restock them. This is one I don't normally stock, um, so I'm gonna try it out. So let me know what you think. If you're interested, I'll hook you up with them. Jungle Vow, species red. Didn't get a lot. Just a dozen. They're actually getting low on stock of these at the at the nursery. So these are smaller ones. In the beginning of the season before pond season opens up, the, the species these will get really big, but um at the at the beginning of before pond season kicked off, when I would order these they'd be a much larger specimen, which um, getting them this size is, is no problem to me. They grow um, pretty quick, so you'll get size um, in no time. They, they propagate by shooting out runners, so a few valves will turn into numerous valves in, in, in a short time. So jungle valve species red. Running out of room. I didn't think I got as much variety in this box as I did. The size is deceiving. So, Vesuvia sword. This is a plant that I was expecting to get in Monday because I had um, I had some customers that really wanted them. These are grown immersed. You can see the buds. Um, these are going to produce smaller uh, baby baby sword plants. This is a Vesuvia sword. Um, again, these, these are immersed, but they'll convert no problem. Once they convert, you'll get the, the submerged form. They're, they're not as, as curly. Um, the submerged form, you get more of a spiral in the leaves. But you already got a nice spiral um, there already. So Vesuvia sword. I got several in here that, that have buds on them. Let me show you another one. Here's another one. Vesuvius. Again, this is a sword plant. Um, they don't get really big, but you get this really cool leaf shape um, that you don't see in, in a lot of traditional swords, um, in your Amazons or your, your ocelots and, and whatnot. So, Vesuvius sword. Prinum calamistratum. I didn't get a lot. It's just four of them. So just a restock. One of my all-time favorite plants. That's a nice one right there. Got the Rasta hairdo right here. Prinum calamistratum. So I e easily my, my favorite plant just on the appearance. Easy plant to grow. Grows slow though. I will tell you that it does grow slow. But just the appearance of it is the, the coolest thing to me. Just the leaf pattern. All right, they get really big. They just grow slow. Red root floaters. Pond and tub season. This is like an awesome plant for that. They need high light, so. Um, in the aquarium, they usually do pretty good because they, they're a floater. And so they're sitting at the top, so they're right next to the light. Uh, this doesn't grow as fast as duckweed or salvinia, um, but it's much prettier. 
when it's happy you'll get a bunch of small little white flowers on it and I don't know if you can see the roots on this one but they're a reddish color so that's where they get their name at red root floaters okay these will go outside in my pond and if you want them for the tank or the tub or pond just let me know and I'll ship them out I sell them five dollars a portion People always ask me what a portion size is I'm going to show you um, I usually say 10 to 15 plants I usually grab a handful that's more than 10 to 15 plants easily um, but people ask me and I tell them um, I usually get like a nice handful and I can tell you if you actually count the plantlets um, it's more than it's more than 10 it's more than 15 so you get you get more than what I actually show you Alright. Looking at time, I'm actually doing pretty good on time. I got potted uh, dwarf hair grass in here and micro swords. So let me open one of these. I special ordered these for a customer. Um, I can get you guys almost anything. So these will fan out once they're submerged. But that dwarf hair grass right there. You can see the tag dwarf hair grass very popular <clears throat> to me it's very very popular in sales me personally I have a hard time trying to grow it in my tank um, just because I suck you know just because I sell plants doesn't mean I'm an awesome office keeper that actually takes takes skill um, I got skill in getting the plants and I know how to take care of them. Um, I know what you're supposed to do to take care of them. Now, certain species always kick my ass. Um, dwarf hair grass personally kicks my ass. Now, another one that's easy for me is micro swords. All right, it's kind of similar. A little bit, a uh, little bit fatter leaf shape. Me personally grows easier for me, and and it can depend on your water conditions too. Um, I know oops, Brazilian pennywort for me grows easily. Um, other people I know that that know what they're doing with plants, they they tell me they can't keep Brazilian pennywort alive for anything. Um, again, just whatever you know, if the water makes them happy. So. If you want to comment below, let me know what plant you know you guys had a hard time with, and and maybe I got a tip to to, to help growing it, or maybe it's kicked my butt too. So, um, anyways, we're almost done here. What I got? Wow, sensitive fern. This is uh, you can grow this as a house plant. You don't submerge it. This is very cool. These are just clippings, so again, you could grow this. It's going to need light, obviously, so you're going to need a light above your tank, or you can grow them outside in your pond or your tub. Um, but you're going to have to pot these, and you could again, you could stick them in the back back of your HOV, and when when they settle down. The leaf's gonna gonna fan out, but when you touch it, uh, it's not doing it now because it's kind of stressed. But the the leaf will, will, will clam up when you touch it, so that's why they call it sensitive. You hurt its feelings when you touch it, and then they clam up. Okay. If you ever got, if you have any questions, you can message me on here or shoot me a message again. Uh, uh, Facebook.com backslash KJE Aquatics. All right. Alright, last but not least, I had a customer specifically, or special order, Anubius Nana Petite. She wanted a hundred of them. I gave them a pretty good deal, and this is what we got. Obviously, I'm going to have to count them later, but we got, I actually ordered 110, just in case there was a few 
when I count out his hundred, I want to make sure that he he, he has you know a, a good a good um, good plants for, for for what he paid for, and I got a couple extra just in case there might be a couple in here that are that are junky looking, and I usually keep this plant in stock so I don't have no no problem ordering extras. But Anubius Nana Petite. Very popular with aquascapers, making bonsai trees and whatnot. You take your, your spider wood, um, your manzanita uh, branches, and you can make a bush, underwater bush, underwater tree. Looks very, very cool. Um, I sell the shit out of these. Anubius Nana Petite. They don't get much taller, but they'll, they'll grow out horizontally. Uh, again, um, I got a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Right. With that, <clears throat> that's all I got. Nothing else is in the box. Um, don't forget, we sell much more than plants, so we can combine shipping on most goods. Um, I pretty much carry anything that you need. Um, just message me. I got fish food, water conditioners, filters, uh, botanicals. So I got guava leaves. I got mulberry leaves. I got Indian almond leaves. Um, I got chola wood, I got mopani, I got spider wood. I got whatever you need for your your, your fish tank and your your tubs or ponds. Um, I don't stock a lot of pond and tub plants, but I can get them for you. Um, no problem. I got orders coming in weekly, so just just adding on to to an order. Um, if you if you let me know, my orders go in on Wednesday night, so let me know before um, Wednesday afternoon and I can add it on to the order and when I put in an order on, on Wednesday night I'll usually get that uh, that order ships out Sunday via Southwest and arrives Monday to my local airport right unless you got Memorial Day and they're supposed to be open according to what you were told but they're contract labor and they're off having cheeseburgers which is it's okay um, I wasn't mad at them I wasn't mad at anybody really stuff happens so um, I'm glad that that everything came in good. The good thing about when I when I ship Southwest, it's overnight. They do have um, a cooler at at each terminal, so these don't sit out on the dock. They put them in they put them in a cooler refrigerator, not not frozen obviously, but the the, the guys at my local airport tell me that the, the cooler temperature stays about 39 40 degrees, which is which is fine. Plants are perfectly fine in cold weather for not a super long time but four or five up to probably ten days heat's actually worse so they come in they pack them with ice packs um, they come in they put them in the cooler and these are probably good for at least a week in there um, usually so anyways that's all I got I appreciate you watching if you need anything message me um, again uh, Facebook.com backslash KDA Plus. Alright, thanks guys.